I am Cedric Palay. I am the Assistant Director for the Labor Relations Unit. We are a unit of six people and we deal with dispute resolution, we deal with misconduct, we deal with grievances, we deal with legal facilitation for our 300 plus schools within the PE district as well as our office-based support staff. Specifically, if one looks at misconduct, if the SGB alerts us of possible infringement by an educator or by a public servant, we are duty-bound to act, to look at the code of conduct and to deal with that alleged misconduct. In respect of grievances, we need to listen to the SGB and assist them to deal with the grievance of our employee. If a grievance is not resolved, it goes over to a formal dispute. It can either go over to a formal dispute or it could go over to litigation, a legal process. Uh, now, whenever there's a bulletin being published, we usually gear up for an influx of disputes. Currently, for the book year which we are in, 85% of the disputes that have been registered with the LRC are appointment promotion related. And uh, in concluding most of them, we have found that the problems that one can attribute to that is that lack of capacity of SGBs. SGBs appear not to have been, you know, uh, informed of, of what measures they are, of what the rule books are that they can go to to deal with, with appointments and promotions. In respect of appointments and promotions, uh, our function would be to defend the employer's stance in the appointment process. Uh, the scenario would be a post is advertised, an appointment process is followed, an appointment is made, um, an applicant who is not happy with the outcome would then dispute the process. Our role would be then to engage the process. We would go in and investigate to see if there was procedural compliance and if there was substantive compliance. Big words, what are those? Our job is to go to the SGB to find out whether they have complied with their function. Uh, break it down even further, we would request a copy of the minutes of the proceeding which has now led to this appointment which is being disputed. We would take the minute, we would analyze the minute and we would see if it complies with you know the elements as we are going to explain to you further, the eight elements that, that we perceive as being essential. We would look at whether uh, there was compliance with legislation we would look at whether they have complied with their function of setting up criteria within that specific area and whether the process on a whole was, was free and fair. In essence, I would say there are eight pieces of legislation or there are eight points or eight rule books that they need to know. Number one, they need to be aware of the um, Employment of Educators Act, they need to be aware of the South African Schools Act, they need to be aware that there is a measure such as the Education Labor Relations Council Resolution Number no. 5 of 1998, they should be aware of there is a measure such as the Provincial Education Labor Relations Council uh, Circular 2 of 2002, they should be aware of that there is a measure such as the Personal Administrative Measure, shortly called the PAM. They should be aware there is a measure called the Provincial Circular Number 49 of 2005. They should be aware that there is a bulletin. They should be aware that there would ultimately be criteria that would be attached to the bulletin for that specific post. I'm now going to zoom in on each of those eight rule books. The South African Schools Act, specifically Section 21I and J, which deals with the functions of the SGB in relation to the appointment and uh, promotion process. Now that particular uh, section in essence just says that the SGB 
shall recommend and the employer, that is the department, shall appoint. I'm not going to go into the dynamics of that particular section, but that is important to note. Um, the second uh, piece of essential legislation is your Employment of Educators Act, um, specifically Section 6.3, which deals with the power of the employer. Uh, in essence, the, the section states that uh, powers of the employer, promotion may only be made on a recommendation of the SGB. So in essence, you cannot have a process and ultimately end up with an appointment if the SGB was not involved. So I think that's very important to note. The third piece of essential legislation is your uh, personal administrative measure, your PAM in short as uh, many people refer to. Now the PAM specifically sets out the due process, the, due, the procedure that needs to be followed in interviews and appointments. Specifically, one needs to go to Chapter B of that document and Chapter B basically sets out three uh, sub-measures. It sets out your sifting process which is owned to the department, so the department will sift. It is a responsibility that the Act bestows on the employer to sift the administrative uh, uh, um, Act. Then we have the shortlisting and interview process. That Act has been bestowed on the SGB. So after the employer has sifted out, the measure goes to the SGB and the SGB will now shortlist and interview. And the third process that the measure uh, alerts one to is the appointment process which is again a departmental competency. So in essence there's three subsections SGB, uh, sorry, um, uh, department SIFS, um, SGB shortlist and interview and the department will appoint. Another measure, the fourth measure is your ELRC resolution number 5 of 1998. Now what is the a resolution? A resolution is a collective agreement that has been reached in a bargaining council between the employer and the employee on a specific aspect. In this case, there was a collective agreement on how to deal with appointments. Now, the measure itself is in, in a way a duplication or a repetition of the Act. It also deals with one sifting by the department, shortlisting by the SGB, and appointment by the department. But it adds, you know, dynamics to the process. It, it gives roles and responsibilities to individuals, namely your employer, your SGB, and your unions would then come into the equation to observe. Why do they observe? In a democracy, um, you have the observer status, to protect, you know, the rights of individuals in terms of the Constitution. The fifth piece of legislation is your PLRC Resolution Number 2 of 2002. Um, this specific resolution has its origins within the province. Now, as previously stated, your ELRC Resolution is a National Bargaining Council Resolution. Uh, which deals with appointments and promotions. Now provinces also has to amend and to make that particular resolution user-friendly to its province and the PLRC has come up with this document to assist or to clarify uh, appointment issues for specifically for the Eastern Cape. This uh, partic uh, particular document is divided into three. It has uh, a, a procedure procedures before the interview, procedures during the interview, and procedures after the interview. So it refines, you know, the previous broad processes even further. And then the sixth piece of document that we have is your Provincial Circular number 49 of 2005. Now what is a Provincial Circular? A Provincial Circular is an employer document. So the employer has looked at the Act, the employer has looked at the national resolution, the employer looked ha has looked at the provincial one and has come up with a, a user manual on how to deal with uh, uh, the appointment of specific cadres of employees. 
So they have compiled a comprehensive document which includes process documents which needs to be complied with, administrative templates that needs to be complied with to ultimately affect the appointment. I'm not going to go through you know, the document. Um, I think one will be provided for easy reading. Okay, the seventh piece of essential legislation um, is the bulletin. People may argue that the bulletin is not a piece of legislation, but the bulletin is actually why we are here, why the appointment and promotion saga continues. It is because we want an individual to fill the vacancy. Now your bulletin is as a result of deliberations um, at school level uh, because of a vacancy which has occurred. This deliberations that the SGB had at a particular meeting because of a, a, a vacancy that has occurred, they have ratified that to the extent that they have come up with a specific profile on what caliber of individual they want to fill that vacancy. They have condensed that and they have forwarded that to the department. The department has now put that, condensed that, and put that into a bulletin for uh, the broader uh, um, sector to apply for. So in essence it should be first, but the reason why we have put it last is just to show you due process, why we have gone through the process to come through to the bulletin. The eighth um, piece of essential legislation is criteria. And what is criteria? It is specific requirements to attempt to find the most suited candidate from qualifying applicants. Now, as mentioned previously, you have a bulletin. The bulletin uh, sets out vacancies for a particular uh, type of job if one may say so. A bulk of individuals will apply. SGBs cannot deal with you know, the bulk, therefore they have to refine the requirements that they have previously given to the employer in an attempt to successfully uh, uh, get the cream of the crop, if, if you wish to put it that way. So that's why they come up with criteria. Now, during dispute resolution, one of the concerns that we, 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 we have is that um, there appears to be an attempt whereby SGBs mold criteria around a specific individual. Let's say you have earmarked educator X because he has been at the school for the past 20 years. You sit down and you mold the criteria around that particular individual. Let's say the individual has a master's in maths and the individual is passionate about uh, sport. So they would attempt to mold the criteria around that in the hope of ultimately having the individual score the highest during that interview process. We say our stance is that prior the process you would have your uh, uh, selection criteria set up the selection criteria would form the sift. You would have your five applicants being thrown into the sift and out pops the ideal candidate. I would say individuals who act in positions, ultimately they apply, they get shortlisted, they do not get appointed, they dispute the process claiming commonly unjustifiable expectation. We maintain that individual who acts has the competency to compete, therefore he or she should be allowed to compete. When they do compete, they are allowed into the, the competition arena, that is the interview on that specific day at that specific time, they should compete with the other individuals based on the criteria which was set. If they fall flat on their face, they fall out of the boat. And ultimately, an HGB should not be intimidated by individuals who act and claim that they are going to dispute the process, claiming unjustifiable expectation. Finally, HGBs, we have very good laws out there. We have very good procedures, we've mentioned them to you. 
follow the procedures to the letter, apply the criteria which you have set up in terms of the laws, have accurate minutes so that we can be in a position to defend your appointments. Our ultimate aim is to have quality education, not only for the learners of Port Elizabeth, but for the country as a whole. Our contribution is we want to assist SGBs in an attempt to gain the best candidature for their posts.